um, and he will uh, he's, he will uh, talk to us about uh, what's new in Abacus 2017. So welcome to our webinar. Uh, I hope you like it. And if you have any questions at the end of the web, uh, please type it type it. And at the end of the webinar, we can um, we can just uh, answer that those. Or uh, if you have any other questions afterwards, please feel free to contact us at any time. Uh, Leo will provide your his email address again, and he will be the main person to to answer your queries. So thank you very much, and I'll leave the uh, the word to Leo. Okay, thank you, Ali. So yeah, thank you everyone for joining uh, today. So uh, so today I'm just going to present like the new enhancements from 2017. Uh, if you have any questions, you can just type it in the chat, and at the end uh, we can answer them. So I'm just gonna start the presentation. Let me know if you cannot see the screen, and uh, so uh, we're trying to figure out. So, so yeah. So now there are new enhancements in in Abacus 2017. So let me, uh, as uh, Ali was mentioned, so let me give you an introduction about the VS. So we are based in Houston. Uh, so we have some other locations in the east and on the west. And as Ali mentioned, we are a consultancy uh, engineering services. We provide APA and CFD services. So we also, as partner from Simulia, we resell like this uh, Simulia portfolio, like Abacus, uh, iSight, Episave, and Tosca. And we also provide training. So not only from Simulia related, but we also have some uh, industrial training courses. And also, when we have the 3D printing and additive manufacturing simulation services, so if you have the need of, uh, I mean, any printed uh, uh, physical part or, or you are interested in uh, getting a printer, so we can help you out as well on that. So now let, let me start with the, with the topics for today. So I'm going to give a general uh, uh, introduction of uh, what is new in Abacus standard, in Abacus explicit, uh, about the performance like with GPU acceleration and some mechanics like new materials and all that. So, so starting with the Abacus standard, so there are some new uh, formulations for contact and for example for XFAM as well, a new uh, LMS uh, introducing into the, so into the solver. So let's start some with quick, uh, quick um, history of uh, how contact uh, is evolving in Abacus. So it started in the first release in 1978. So the first approach, it was uh, gap unit elements contact. So basically that was a point to point contact. So that prevents the penetration in the normal direction. So most, mostly it was used in, uh, using beam elements. And then over time, it got we was more sophisticated. So then it comes this approach that was the surface-based approach, which actually is being used uh, successfully these uh, nowadays as well. So basically you define the contact pair between the surfaces that you are going to interact. But then the issue with this is like when you have a, like let's say a large dozen of assemblies or a large number of intera interactions, so it, it can be time consuming and tedious process to do that. So that's why the general contact, uh, it came. So basically it, everything can get in contact with everything. So Abacus can take care of the numerical aspects of the contact formulation. So initially it was first introduced in the explicit. Then uh, a few years later, it was in Abacus standard. So you can use it in Abacus standard and explicit as well. So in so for Abacus standard, so in general contact uses the surface to surface approach. So basically one facet of one surface can penetrate on a facet of another surface. So it doesn't use this uh, pair contact pair uh, algorithm, which actually you need to define which is the, which one is a slave and which one is the master. So it doesn't exist in this approach. And actually is, is this general contact is much better for, so it's smooth for better convergence and it is more, more accurate. So for example, for contact pressure results. And, and you can see from the, 
from the pictures here. So, you know, only surface to surface between two solid bodies, but also it can be uh, edges contacting a surface or let's say two edges that are contact each other like beams and vertex to surface. So for this release, uh, there was a major work to improve this tension between all these formulations. So trying to make them uh, as smoother as possible and um, for better performance and convergence. So actually there are some um, uh, benchmark problems that they were used to kind of reduce the number of iterations uh, for these uh, contact formulations. And what is new in, in, in this, uh, also in Abacus 2017, is this new formulation for edge to surface with thick beams as a master as a master surface. So now this is a better resolution for contact, let's say, between a solid or shell element with a large diameter line element, like a beam or trusses. So you can use that one, and this is an ongoing uh, improvement in this formulation that it came out in 2017. So now let me talk about another enhancement in related to contact in the cohesive behavior in general contact. So now it can be used for general contact uh, in Abacus standard, which actually before it was only in, in Abacus explicit and if for contact first in Abacus standard. So now is is a uh, now is uh, is uh, this is available in general contact uh, in in Abacus standard. So so basically, this uh, cohesive behavior is uh, usually is usually when you there are the bonding between two parts together. So as I mentioned, it was available in the contact pair algorithm for in explicit. That now is available in the general contact. So you can see some examples here, like the, this the bonding of the near lattice effect, who actually you don't need to define, you don't need to define the, all these contact pairs between, between all balls. So it is automatically with general contact, it will, it will define it. And also some other example is just this uh, at the bottom. So you can see this plate, which actually there are independent elements from one side to the other. So there are no shared nodes and they are and, and they are bonded together. Another example here is the for multi-scale material modeling. So you will see these uh, fibers that are embodied inside of the metrics. So this is a very good application that, that you can use this uh, cohesive behavior in general contact. Now, uh, another enhancement in the Abacus standard is uh, what is called linear contact. So usually this is uh, for a small sliding and frictionless. So, and also when you don't have, uh, the material behavior is linear. So that's very important uh, to make these assumptions in order to use this uh, technique. So it's called LCP, which is, it stands for linear complementary uh, problem. And this is uh, within Abacus standard. So basically, this is a numerical technique that handle, uh, is handled within the solver, solver and there is no track of the nodes or facets. So actually this technique, it, it can help to speed up the, substantially the, the contact formulation. Now, so you can see here an example of a benchmark problem. Like, uh, so here you can see the graph that is comparing, uh, so how how it can be efficient, like you see a factor of almost 10%, I mean, all, um, a factor of 10 of uh, performance improvement when using LCP. But uh, just be careful because you need to, um, so this is for as, assuming that this is a linear problem, a linear problem, so in order to use this approach. Uh, so here, just going more into the LCP, so, uh, so there, of course there are some limitations. So it cannot be nonlinear uh, problems as well as uh, when you have a large number of um, assemblies or contact of, of number of nodes that are contacting. So it can uh, get difficult to efficient in the in the running time. So just there is some I mean good and cons like so be very careful when you use this LCP uh, equation solver. Now, regarding the uh, so new enhancement in fracture mechanics, 
So specifically for XFAM. So now it can be included in the general contact domain. So so basically the contact interactions that involving the XFAM surfaces now can be modeled similar to those involving in the non XFAM. So now you can remove this limitation that it was in before we actually this XFAM surface could only interact with itself under purely small sliding assumption. So now this limitation is not anymore with the general contact. And at the same time, these uh, XFAM surfaces can now be specified in the same manner as the, any non-XFAM type. And there are various definitions for contact, for contact inclusions and exclusions, like contact properties and also contact initialization. Uh, here, so what you see new in Abacus 2017 is uh, the in XFAM is the, that the surface uh, the, the surface element facets faces and the edges on like in an XFAM crack, crack surface can be used in surface to surface and edge to surface formulations. So it can handle in this self contact and contact with uh, other surfaces. It is not supported yet to the edge to edge and vertex to surface, but uh, it is still effort on 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 on, on and in the future releases it might be uh, available. And this uh, contact output on crack, on crack surfaces for the relevant contact formulation is fully fully supported. Uh, now talking to I mentioned in Abacus standard is a new element that's uh, that is called the brick shell element which actually is very used, is designed for thin structures, which is need the 3D material behavior. So actually it's very useful for composite solids. So, and it's very good because it bends very well about one plane and it can handle large aspect ratios. And uh, one good thing that you can use is for, let's say a low plastic deformation in the thickness direction, which you might need it, for example, for forming analysis. So I mean, you can check check it check it out and see it is something that you might use. Now uh, let me talk about some enhancement in Abacus Explicit. So first, starting with the CSON. So CSON for those who don't know what is ta uh, what is what does it do? So this technique is for modeling the crushing behavior of composites. So now it's available in 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 a uh, through general contact in in abacus explicit in 2000 uh, for the two start 2017 so now is is uh, you can is more robust it's, uh, he has better performance and usability advantage over the contact per implementation so here you can see like so what is special about this method what is needed so conventionally you use a uh, this FM failure mechanics don't capture the continuous crushing behavior. So basically, typically, typically an element like reaches some damage or failure criteria and is removed from the calculation. So then there is this point like, because initially when there are some contact, this, if you remove the element, then suddenly disappears. So this contact impacts the element behind it and this can create a spiky behavior as you can see from the curve. So, which is not realistic, so you, it doesn't match with um, experimental data. So what CSON do, approach does right now is so basically integrating the material element and, co and contact all together. So the crush zone passes through an element and as a continuous fashion, so which is more accurate for real world problems. So for example, here there are some examples that for using of this CSON. So like some of these previous limitations were removed from the contact pairs. So for example, you can crush again multiple surfaces. So you can crush a car against a rolling surface. And so you will see two types of failure mechanics. So one is the shell structure is crushing and the solid structure behind it is, is, is failing due to not crushing, I mean, using the not crushing traditional damage approach. And one limitation, it was the, in contact pairs, it was, it was kind of handled the T surfaces of complicated junctions. So now it can be handled now using the general contact. 
Uh, another new enhancement in uh, Alacris Explicit is the uh, anisotropic friction, which actually has been uh, always in the in Alacris standard, so it's new right now. It's included in the in Alacris Explicit. So basically, you have uh, you can specify uh, different friction coefficients in uh, the friction coefficient in different orientations between two surfaces. So usually the directional preference is specified to the surface property assignment, and you can specify the friction the friction coefficient to the contact property assignment and surface interaction. So you can see here, like if you have orthogonal or parallel, so you see how the the critical shear stress is 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 changing due to the effect of the direction of the of the of the friction of the two surfaces. So similarly, this is an example, for example, of a seat belt surface. So you can specify a, a friction coefficient through one direction and another friction coefficient in a different direction. So this is a very good capability now in our acoustic process. Now let me talk about the performance. So how throughout the previous releases, uh, how is is has evolved into um, until up to up to today? So you will see some. So let me start with a quick overview of how hardware evolves uh, has evolved throughout the year. So initially, you will see that there was no concept of single co of, of core. So there was only CPUs, and, and usually these uh, CPUs they were comes up uh, when it was coming every eighteen months. It was kind of uh, twice as faster as the previous one. So now it's starting in the 2000s. So it's actually in 2005, there is this uh, where the multi-core area began. So now then a single CPU has multiple cores for, execute, for execution. So to be much faster and efficient. So it kind of level out all the all this. So now nowadays it's always uh, multiple multiple core and parallel processing, which actually this uh, introduces a few challenges depending on the. So you can see some problems. It might be better if uh, when you use this uh, uh, multiple core and parallel process. So you need to kind of see why is how is uh, configured this to for 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 a specific problem. So and there is this concept of GPU, which actually has been in the last few years. Which actually many many cores, uh, typically a thousand cores or four thousand cores. So this is being used uh, throughout the last years. And uh, one more thing is the Intel, which is very is entering into the market right now, which is a similar approach. And it's approximately 72 cores per CPU. So uh, the idea here is like we're trying to, we're trying to leverage in all these multi-core in, in parallel processing. Now regarding the uh, Abacus uh, AM, AMS for Eigen Solver, so Eigen Solution, so you can see that it started in the, back in 2006, 2006 with the Abacus 6.6, .6, which actually was uh, more sequential, and then it go into the, into, with, the, with the years, with the parallel, so you see like in 6.10, it was the parallel version operating in a single compute node, and then in the C Tech six fourteen, there was a, this unique industrial solution, which actually was fully coupled analysis with with AMS. So now with the concept of CP of GPU, so now is not initially it was some limited range of models that to be used, but now it's a there is more broad uh, there is a broad range of models that it can be used with this GP, GPU. So basically, the new features of the AMS solver is uh, th that you can uh, implement in this 2017 is the, that the number of requested eigenvalues is now taken into account inside the solver, which actually previously it was a post-processing parameter. So, so then, uh, and also very important is for like fully coupled acoustic structural analysis. So this acoustic range factor that can be used to apply a different maximum frequency value for the acoustic domain in the model. So now this feature allow the users to improve the accuracy of the acoustic responses using this uh, acoustic, uh, acoustic range factor. So it doesn't pay any significant performance penalty by the you know increase of the overall AMS cutoff values or the nominal value that you specify. 
So here is uh, some uh, uh, benchmark model which for this AMS. So this uh, is an impeller, so it has 8.2 million deg degrees of freedom. So you can see this 28 core that it was used, so 76, 8 uh, gigs uh, of memory. So basically the idea here is that you can see that it is a 70% faster when you leverage your GPU. So, uh, so it's been an uh, effort in improving this uh, uh, GPU acceleration in AMS as well. Now going into the direct sparse solver. So, uh, so here you start initially in 6.2 version. So it was scaling up to four to eight CPUs. Then you know it started scaling support for clusters, and then then there is this concept, this new concept in 2010 for parallel parallel solver ordering. So basically, you can scale. It scales. Those are scales for time and memory. So you can use some multiple compute nodes in a in a cluster. Then with the initial introduction of GPU, so you can get a good acceleration for parallel uh, solvering. So and then with the further GPU improvement in the, actually with the, this Intel uh, Xeon, so you can have a much better um, acceleration. So because the idea here is like with the Abacus, so you have to factorize all these metrics using other composition methods. So you need to have a very robust for contact nonlinear materials, you know, etc. And all that. Uh, so you need to. That's how and that how it evolves. So here's an example about two benchmarks models. So one it was the S4B. S4B is just a typical benchmark model that it was used throughout the years. Uh, this is a vaulting of a cylinder head onto onto an engine block. This one it has a uh, five million degrees of freedom. Uh, you can see the S2B. That's another uh, benchmark model, which is um, for nonlinear static analysis of a symmetric section of a flywheel. It has a centrifugal loading. So that here, here is with the idea here is the those two benchmark benchmark models. So you can see from the graphs like how for a fixed version of the software, how performance uh, you know depending on the underlying software architecture, you can improve in, in running the time with the it can improve the running time. So you can see the benefits of so you see like the, the two the and the blue and the and the red color. So when you introduce GPU, so how uh, significant improvement in the performance, and of course is 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 problem dependent because some models uh, on the depending on the density of the question of the sparsity. So to solve it can it can leverage parallel processing. So someone it fits better than, than the other. And so like for example in this specific case for the S two B is much more efficient. And here is just uh, the same, but this is just, we are fixing one hardware, this IV bridge. So this is using 20 cores. So the idea here is to compare how the software has improved uh, throughout the uh, previous releases. So you can see a 20% to 25% improvement in the performance. Uh, now looking into uh, scaling uh, for large problem in Abacus standard. So you see this benchmark that is a nonlinear uh, uh, analysis for actually it has gas gaskets behavior. So it has 60 million degrees of freedom and requires one gigabyte of memory to run it. So you can see how uh, by of course you're including your uh, um, increasing the number of nodes. So you have 20 cores per node. So it's about 400 uh, cores uh, so far. So so this whole system is continuing working on improving this performance on you know scaling, particularly on larger number of cores. So actually nowadays uh, running problems with the direct solver with the direct solver for up to 100 and 150 million degrees of freedom. So right now there, there is ongoing effort trying to make it more robust for so for linear and non-linear uh, problems. Now, uh, for Abacus Explicit, it's kind of a different approach. So this is uh, so basically you're trying to sweep in over a bunch of love, uh, over a bunch of a lot of elements. So basically, in Explicit, what is happening is uh, it's called a domain composition. So basically, you break the problem into small pieces. So ideally, you want each piece has the same computational load. So, but it's not always easy to do achieve this. So 
because it can change throughout the simulation. For example, as you can see, this uh, car crash simulation. So initially, they have the same the, the the elements or domains at the back of the car. It has the same uh, computational expense as the domains at the front. However, you know later when the crash the car start crashing into the wall, so you see some plasticity, some contact is happening. So you see no longer the domains are balanced. So this is always a challenge uh, that is there. So uh, you're looking into rebalance all this so we can scale up. Uh, so this is scaling up the number of cores. So actually there's a new uh, view, uh, good enhancement because you see from the previous releases it was about 100 cores or so now it's up to you know 1,000 cores. Uh, now let me talk about the, uh, some enhancements in mechanics like a new material models, uh, some uh, updates in subroutines as well. So starting with this uh, called parallel rheological framework. So for those who doesn't know this, so basically there isn't been an ongoing effort throughout the years to basically capture the complicated material behavior. So for example, uh, for modeling polymers, which actually you can define the material models, so capturing different complex behaviors, for example, hysteresis, stress softening, Mullins effect, the uh, viscosity, viscosity, so all this. So this, so you can see. So basically, this approach, which actually is typical, uh, so you you do the a building block of every material. So and there are some primitive primitive behaviors, and then you assemble into more complex behaviors. So you can see that you can assemble in parallel. So let's say hyperelastic uh, Mullins effect. So there is a effort on combining all these behaviors together. So as you can see from the schematic. Now, the challenge is the, that some engineers, for example, has to, do, has to deal with this for two, three, five in parallel, which is, is kind of unusable. So that's why we have uh, this um, uh, calibration, which actually is used through eyesight. So eyesight is kind of a, a tool to automate processes or to make uh, workflows. So it uses this uh, uh, this tool to to build virtual models from the physical test. So and then they are used to generate those type of curves. And then so when you have those, you run those models with this uh, set of param material parameters, and you try to we match the output of those models with experimental data. So once you match them. So you can uh, uh, put those material parameters in the optimization, and, and then it gives you what is the optimized uh, uh, you know, uh, configuration for the, for the material parameters, and you can put back into Abacus. So you can use this advantage of eyesight to calibrate your uh, models with the test data. Uh, so here is uh, just talking about the PRF again. The, uh, so for 2017, uh, there is now you can use the elements with 2D plane uh, stress formulation, uh, and also so you can use the shell and membrane on the three-dimensional space. So that's a new uh, enhancement that is in 2017 for this model. Now, uh, let me talk about some couple of material models that are new in, 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 in Abacus. So one is the capability to model uh, super elasticity. So like metals such as nitinol. So now you can use this uh, super elastic model just to study the mechanical response of martensitic uh, phase transformation. So exactly is available through a subroutine that you can use. And another one is the TNM. Uh, for those who don't know, this is more into predict the structural realization in the glassy polymers. So this can be used for different shrinkage uh, prediction. So it usually is characterized in three regions. So you have a liquid phase, which actually is a continuous phase that is a transition region. And then the, the glassy region, which actually those changes uh, occur over a long time scale. So actually those two new materials are uh, were based on like some customer requesting these uh, to be added to Abacus. Uh, so here for multi-scale multi -scale material modeling, so just give you a quick overview of, the, of this enhancement. So basically customers want to, you know, represent more accurately 
the behavioral material. So they don't only want to do that, but they also want to design a material for a particular product. So now this concept of multi-scale material in Abacus standard. So basically the goal of multi-scale material is to predict the material behavior at the macro level using information at uh, smaller scales. So, so what is new here is like, and you can, uh, you can uh, have a contain a metric material and one or more inclusion materials. So, so now you can now model composite materials where a matrix material is reinforced with one or more inclusions. So this uh, multi-scale approach is applied during the analysis just to capture the nonlinear and history dependent material behavior. So you can see there are different methods. Uh, so from the graph, so you see that some methods or technique uh, are more or less accurate, but those tend to be fast. But also some methods are very accurate, but are computational in intensive. So the idea here is that it's ongoing development of a framework that to capture these um, uh, multi-scale materials. So it's just the ability, ability to combine material behaviors in a in a in a volume fraction sense. So and for this new release, so whatever you see in, in, uh, in the circles, the red circles, those are the ones that are new uh, um, material modeling. So I already talked about this PRF, so, and there is this Mori Tanaka, and so, and the continuum model FERB. So if you are interested, just check them out and we can provide you some guidance for your specific applications or what to use. And here it is uh, for multi-scale material as well. So this is uh, actually a Vacus plugin tool that is actually is not part of the release yet, but uh, this this the, this whole system is working on this plugin in this plugin. So this is kind of a you you can have a representative volume element that can be created, like let's say different material properties. You can be going for your model, so you can characterize the results, carry out the load cases. So you can convert to material parameters. So th there are different uh, and very good uh, plugin that they can be used uh, for multi-scale material. So uh, this is still going on. So uh, we can let you know if when it's, it's, it's released. Now for linear dynamics, uh, actually, uh, so initially, more Abacus it was more into you know focus primarily on nonlinear geometry, nonlinear analysis. But uh, you know there are some uh, industries like uh, automotive industry, so they need uh, the linear dynamic feature is very uh, is a lot, is used uh, a lot in the in this industry. Like for example, Abacus syntax integration. So you need to there is new enhancements that it has been rewrite all these linear dynamics capabilities. So now it's kind of a state of the art in this uh, in the in the Abacus. So he has very good uh, um, accurate accuracy and, and and performance in the for linear dynamics. And one more for mechanics. So actually, that is see this another interesting enhancement that uh, is being um, uh, new in this 2017, which actually. You can add uh, parameter tables for user to routine. So actually, there was a result of another initiative which for additive manufacturing processes. So, uh, so one thing is like uh, basically you can now um, uh, specify a volume fraction of a material added to an element uh, to control the element activation. So you basically, you can allow element to get activated on the fly throughout the simulation. Uh, so here you can see from the so you can see this parameter table type. So you can uh, import data into a subroutine. So you can define data in an input file and access it from the any user subroutine. So there is this nice capability that uh, they include tables and data. So you can define the, in the input deck and you can introduce the input file, the IMP file into a subroutine. So this is kind of the overall uh, enhancements in uh, in Abacus 2017. So you'll see you see some some enhancements in general contact in the Abacus standard and Abacus explicit, as well as uh, the performance. How is uh, with the new releases are getting better, so more uh, efficient, and some mechanics like new materials. So 
just this is kind of the new enhancement for new enhancement for Abacus 2017. So thank you everyone for uh, for joining for this webinar and let me know you can type uh, you have any question. So you can type in on the chat and I can answer them for you. So uh, someone is asking if the presentation material will be available for attendees. So yeah, so we will uh, um, we will uh, uh, the, uh, at the end of the of the of the presentation. So we will send the recording as well, and we can send the the presentation. So there is a question about the, is there any plans to include general contact for heat transfer? Uh, well, I haven't heard of anything like that. There is a, uh, on on heat transfer specifically, but so uh, let me let me find out if there is some development development on on, on heat transfer. So, So you can type the question uh, on the on the chat. Do you have any, or you can send us a. If you have any question, you can also email us at uh, support at .com If any question comes to your mind, so we will uh, email you the the presentation with the recording as well. Thank you.
So uh, thank you everyone for joining today. So I will send uh, uh, an email with the presentation and the recording. So thank you everyone for joining for this uh, uh, webinar about the new release of Abacus 2017. Thank you. Have a good day.